You call yourself an artist. On what ground? Drown, baby, drown. Download the One Page Spotlight app for artists. We are taking it forward with uh, three rounds, uh, where we'll be talking about the initial, the present landscape and the uh, uh, art scene of the world globally, as well as in the Indian context, how things are, and then taking it uh, to the next level of uh, discussing about the challenges and opportunities uh, that are in front of us. Um, while we're talking about uh, transforming art to the cart, basically taking it to the business level, business perspective of it. And thirdly, we are moving ahead to see uh, what are the potential and how a digital platform, how digitization of uh, content um, is taking us to the next level or how we are able to connect with uh, audiences, buyers, and art appreciators and see that you know a new uh, beyond the border scenario is created for artists. Uh, so we have um, all of us, all our five panelists are here with us. And uh, first of all, uh, before going for the formal starting, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and uh, really appreciate you taking out time and being with us to talk about uh, something which is very, very closely connected to all of us. And uh, we wanted to uh, discuss, share our experiences and take it forward. So um, thank you. First of all, thank you very much. All five of you and all our participants who are joining from different parts of the world. And uh, just a small request because uh, initially we will go with the rounds of uh, discussing a um, few segments with our panelists. And then we will open our uh, floor to the Q&A. In that time, we will request all of you to kindly mute your microphones so that it becomes easier for us to uh, interact and you can also have a convenience to listen to each one of us. Uh, we are coming up with an art bazaar, uh, trying to see uh, as a digital platform, as a uh, social media professional network, how we can uh, create an, uh, a commune of uh, artisans, artists, and also look at the market and see that we provide them a space to interact and collaborate. As a part of it, uh, we thought it will be great to have uh, such experienced uh, people like you coming and sharing your thoughts with all of us and taking it forward so that uh, it does, doesn't become a mere uh, a program of uh, selling and purchasing and sharing uh, products, but it also enlightens the thoughts and uh, make people understand about the complete journey and the scenario of the art market and the art business as a whole and how we can uh, take it forward, how we as individuals, as organizations or individual artists can take it forward. So it will be exciting to hear your experiences and also share thoughts and also interact with audiences. So that's the whole objective where we decided that we'll have a series of uh, discussions and uh, this is one of them and this is the first for all of us and so we're very very happy and um, thank you uh, once again on behalf of One Piece Spotlight and each and every one of us from the team of One Piece Spotlight that uh, you joined and uh, tried to share your experiences with all of us. So going ahead what we are going to do is talking about in the first segment we will try to talk about the complete art landscape and the challenges that are in front of us. What has been in the past? What is it present? And what are the difficulties? What are the challenges? You, when you have started your journey, how things have been? And what, what is it the common challenges that everybody faces in a, in a present time? Purvi, go ahead. Great, Kapoor. Uh, hi, my name is Purvi Sultania. And uh, I'm a visual artist. I just graduated from the Maharaja Sayaji Law University. I work in uh, water-based mediums and I just add space to do soda. Then uh, I can share more as we speak and I can also maybe share my Instagram handle later for you to be able to have a little bit um, of an idea about my work exactly. Okay. Very 
Uh, to round off, uh, my name is Jai Ranjit. I am uh, the Associate Director of Student Experience at ASD School of Design and Innovation. Uh, I'm also an artist, a photographer, and a printmaker. Um, and I've been uh, working as an artist, uh, as a freelancer, and also as an independent artist as for about uh, 13 years now, coming up on 14. And I've been teaching for about 11 of those years uh, in various capacities to try and educate as many of the public, uh, ranging from as young as six years old, all the way up to around 86 years old, uh, in different types of art forms and different ways of expressing themselves. Because I feel like uh, there's not enough talk about art in India, which means there's not enough appreciation and therefore not enough buying and selling to support the artist community itself. So that's my kind of direction coming at this. Thank you. Thank you for initiating this. Uh, since I was not there. And so I, I don't think that we again need a separate introduction right now. So that has already been taken care of well, well in the right way. And um, so I, while I was talking, um, initially I was talking about the kind of a flow of the uh, program which I was planning. So I'd like to share with you so that we you know we all are clear about the way forward. Uh, initially in the First round, we would like to talk about the, the landscape of art and uh, and the challenges which we have, and in different forms. Uh, going ahead, uh, talking about the uh, opportunities in front of us. Uh, in spite of all the challenges, one of the opportunities that is in the present day. And a third round, we'll talk about uh, the digital and the online platform and the changing time, how uh, digitization and changing time has uh, created a different world for artists and artisans. And in a scenario like that, how to take things forward? What are, the, um, what are your observations and perspective on that? And, uh, after the third round, we will go for an Q&A session with all our audience and viewers who are present in the session. And that's that's the whole plan to take it forward. So I guess uh, we are good to start off and uh, all of us are okay with the flow which we have decided. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's begin the... Uh, discussion with the first round and I will I wanted you to, it to be a more casual and interactive mode altogether and also at the same time um, in each of the sessions what I have tried to do is put a uh, general establishing uh, segment of uh, question to all of you also <coughs> questions uh, so that you know we all talk in, in our respective uh, areas of experience as well and also take it from um, Yes. Yes, please. Dr. Hari Singh, can you um, hear us? You wanted to say something? This is uh, Jija Hari. Um, I, I, I'm having, I, I cannot hear what you people are saying. So I'm just trying to shift to another computer. Uh, may I just, uh, you had, I have, I have um, I logged on, I've tried to log on. Will you just admit me in? Yes, yes. To another computer, yeah. Okay, just a second. We are let Seven O Z or something it says. Okay, seven zero Z J four K. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's right, that's right. Yes, yes, I have, uh -huh. I have done that. You've done that? Okay. So I'll just replace that. Looking at me. Okay. Uh oh. Dr. Yeah, Harrison, can you unmute? Yes, yes. Now I think it this is, is better. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me properly now this time? I can hear you, yes. Okay. So, it so I think uh, I think we are perfectly all set to initiate, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so uh in order to uh, start this whole um, journey of uh, talking about uh, art and creativity and the uh, perspective of art and art bazaar, and also art as a business, mm. uh, we all, uh, all of you come from very different diverse backgrounds of works and experiences. 
uh, initially to start it off, I would like to hear from all of you about your experiences in terms of how you have looked into um, the art landscape and the uh, challenges that you have faced in your in your journey till now. And what is what is your understanding about about uh, the art market and the business of art at, at as of now today? How do you look at it? Uh, any one of you can start and I will leave it to completely to you. And so I think uh, that's how we wanted to start it off. Uh, may I start? Yes, please. Once again, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I, at the outset, I really would like to congratulate um, um, uh, the organizers of this for, you know, having uh, organized such a wide, such a program with such wide scope. And uh, my small interaction shows that you people have a comprehensive view of the, of the whole thing. Uh, I would like to just start with uh, um, Art Mantram. Art Mantram is a, is a not-for-profit trust and our vision is based on the strong belief that art is innate in everyone. Therefore, the vision is to make art a part of everyday life of everyone. Um, we promote art, artists, and also awareness, art awareness among the public. Uh, you were asking about the market, so it touches upon that. We create multifarious events and festivals on art, design, and culture, consciously acting as a bridge between artists and I wouldn't call uh, the market, uh, we would like to call it a patrons of art. Yeah, actually, Art Mantram was born out of uh, uh, a compassionate uh, uh, impulse. Uh, Kargil war had happened in 1999 and I was just a mere civil servant. I was an inspector general of police in Delhi with Airport Authority of India. And I sold all my paintings moved by the stories of the uh, of the um, of the widows of Kargil, and donated uh, um, 2.53 lakhs to uh, to the Kargil fund when my salary was just about 25,000 or so. Uh, it was a large sum, but then after that, the Orissa floods happened, and uh, that time we had a few of us got together and had a group exhibition and raised five lakhs of rupees. Uh, and uh, we rebuilt an old age home. So I thought at that time that, uh, you know, selling is easy, market is very good and things like that. Art Mantram was born then. Uh, my idea actually at that time was to, I mean, all the artists were rallying around me and uh, art was, a ho was actually a hobby. I was very passionate about art and I was painting a lot, but it was after all a hobby because I was... Uh, I was I had a regular job um, but when we started Art Mantram my idea was that uh, oh we just have to get together the artworks and put it up and people will come and buy uh, my idea was to create a platform where artists could paint and paint and paint and leave their work with us and we can we'll sell and nurture the artists I soon found out that it is just a pipe dream and it doesn't happen that way. It is not viable at all, as you all know now. And 20 years later, I also know. Not 20 years later, I soon found out in a year or two. We had two, three exhibitions. Uh, I had curated many shows on art and on, on paper and watercolor, uh, things like that. But soon we found out that it is... It is uh, it is a buyer's market and sellers have no value whatsoever. Uh, so um, uh, we uh, organize uh, local events, national events, international festivals, workshops, camps, events and all that. To put it in a, in a nutshell, um, we have a huge list of activities over the uh, two decades. I think somebody is talking in between. Um, uh, we have had, yeah. Just to uh, mute your mics, please. 
We have had many big canvas events like All City Festival in 2004 in Bangalore City itself, Rorik Centenary Celebration and Bangalore International Festival, and many like that. We had a festival in London. We had, uh, we had maybe about 20 events so far. Then art camps and workshops, if you uh, look at uh, 15 odd we have had at various places. Okay. Then art shows, uh, maybe 30 plus. Interactive sessions, also maybe 30 plus. Uh, sensitive art for the challenged. We have special programs for challenged children, as well as we have done several for deaf, deaf mute artists, your challenged uh, artists. Uh, who are adults, we, we had had special programs for them. Now also we are thinking of doing a national exhibition for them. Then we give Mantram Lifetime Achievement Awards for women in the arts and literature, music, dance, um, art and literature. Um, we have given to people like Anjali Ilamen and this year we are going to give to Sonal Man Singh, Rukmani Varma and uh, the writer is, uh, uh, Devaki Jain. Mm. Now we also give scholarships and uh, do art, other kinds of artist support. Uh, I would also like to just mention about the market. When you talk about the market, I think that market has to be uh, really, really created. Uh, a hype has to be built up. So from that point of view, your social media platform is going to be to be such a morale, morale booster and also it will boost the uh, art sales in the whole country, I feel. Uh, what Art Mantram has been doing is that, you know, the, we, we knew that the artists are the worst affected in these, uh, you know, pandemic times. So we decided to, we had a, in July 20, I think 23rd to 26th, four day poetry festival we had, Glass House, uh, a glass house festival of poetry from around the world it was a grand success and everybody felt so good you know we sort of momentarily came out of the gloom and isolation and depression and uh, but then we thought that we should do something about the artists so we selected 40 artists um, and uh, from october onwards october november december january or over a period of four months we are exposing we are promoting um uh, four works of 10 artists, but these are all works with uh, works which are priced at 6,000 and below. We have about six, uh, no, yeah, uh, seven to eight uh, artists who are, um, uh, who are beginners, who have had one exhibition or maybe two, who haven't sold at all for the past one year. And uh, we keep two or three very good artists so that people, uh, you know, notable artists, so people come in and then they buy the other people. First, first month, that is October, out of the 40 works we intended to sell, 32 got sold. So the market is there for art. Uh, second month, that is the current month, November 7th, we inaugurated it. And um, uh, so far, I think 25 works got sold. Uh, but we find that this is only because, not I wouldn't say only because, because people from people uh, uh, who had seen uh, seen our uh, um, you know uh, seen our posts in um, uh, Insta and Facebook also had come and bought a few a uh, lot of works, I should say, but. I would say that 70 to 80% of the works are bought by so I am not really uh, able to say objectively whether it is a very good market or a bad market, though the big artists, like say, for example, Rekha Rao, Sujata Bajaj, Anjali Lamenen, all of them are saying that they are selling like crazy during the pandemic. People seem to be having, I mean, initial months, uh, April, May, June, they did not have much money, but I think that uh, uh, 
people uh, have got money because we cannot do foreign travels we cannot do travels so that money is saved up we cannot throw parties that money is saved up we cannot uh, Mm, go out and uh, entertain ourselves so that money is saved up we are not going shopping a lot so that money is saved up i think that and the businesses and uh, even real estate is picking up and so people do have money and the market is improving and this is the best way to leverage upon this sentiment i mean a combination of the 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 sadness and the gloom um and uh, the uh, the the feeling of compassion uh, to help uh, people who are less fortunate people who are maybe starving artists kind you know kind of a thing i put in in quotation marks uh, but um, also people have seem to be having in this new normal they seem to be having some extra money and can actually spend on art Uh, i would just uh, like to stop at this uh, at this uh, um, juncture and uh, i will come in later on in the second and third section thank you very much thank you uh, thank you so much for giving us in complete understanding about your journey art mantram's journey and your work all throughout and uh, i just wanted to uh, um, tempted to ask you one uh, very important question before i move to other panelists is that uh, because primarily you are working with artists and artisans and also talking about uh, weavers yes weavers, weavers and all. Weavers. so how difficult or how easy is to connect with a traditional artist and motivate them to transform their artwork to a contemporary present and also to the business form altogether how 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 had it been so so uh, we have been personally uh, done this work but i have been watching others who are doing it is not that difficult at all people are willing to change it, it is rather rather um, it is much better than closing closing shop so they are willing to change but when you talk about product as well um, you know you can um, the artwork can be transferred on to um, fabric sari yeah, and the building and the sari shirts uh, bed bed cover table cover um, curtains it can be transferred onto uh, fabric which is happening all over the world and it's a very burgeoning industry i should say it is no more it no more no more creative uh, creative works so much uh, and it can be transferred onto wood it can be transferred onto walls those things are possible to um, you know to create um, a commodity which can be sold and which can be replicated and um, and uh, even hussein's work hussein's daughter is doing a lot of uh, printing of hussein's work on sarees <laughs> everybody knows and many 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 people are doing that but what i would say is that instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, um, you know uh transferring it to other medium uh we can do you to you, you your question had two parts one is how willing are the traditional artists folk artists and traditional artists how willing are they to change or you know transform right. uh, to the demands of the modern world yes. and number two it was the product product yes yeah. product i answered i hope uh, the uh, the um, people are willing people are willing they have they may not be willing to change. i mean they won't change their styles especially the uh, the the artists who have who have you know uh, who have established their style but i am sure they will be uh, the, the artists we have asked people whose uh, whose uh, work started at 80000 and things like that we asked them to uh, to give us works for 6000 rupees and i was so surprised that uh, they all initially they resisted but i said that this is for a cause i want you to be there so that you you will attract the um, the clientele the market will come to us and the other people can sell and they all they painted they didn't give their big paintings but then they did paint and they it it shows how that they are willing to ad adapt and adopt to the demands of the market so i think that is possible but uh, 
uh, the forecard, if you are looking at it, uh, people who are working in that domain would uh, vouch uh, for the fact that um, it needs a lot of uh, focus work. Uh, people uh, in textiles, um, in this, uh, no, Rajasthan Heritage Week is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is uh, observed every uh, year. You, you might be aware of that. A lot of people, one person, Prasad Bidapa, who has an institute of fashion design, he spent one year and brought in a lot of designers from all across the world who worked with the artisans, weavers, who were doing what they have been doing for the past 100 years, 200 years, tie and dye and things like that. They, even they, when prevailed upon, when shown the way, they moved to um, uh, to uh, creating uh, fabric um, processes, mod modifying processes, so that their work will be saleable. They will their work will be acceptable in the market. So it is possible to to bring in modification and change. It may not be easy, but now is the time. People are all crushed up. People are all isolated. People are all deprived. So this mm -hmm. perhaps is the time to, I mean, you leverage upon this special and unique circumstance and launch anything, any idea. It is the fertile ground to plant any seed today. And Art Mantra will be very, very happy to to associate with anybody who is wanting to you know take the plunge i am so very happy to hear about this full um, assurance of uh, that welcoming assurance that it's uh, not so easy but at the same time it's it's not difficult also people are willing to change that gives us a positivity as a community of artists to take things forward and jump into it right away and see that as you said rightly it's the fertile ground right now so let's uh, let's take that uh, let's take that opportunity and let's next to the move forward um, i would like to uh, move ahead to uh, jay right now uh, to understand uh, from his perspective uh, about uh, understanding of art and the art landscape also, particularly focusing on because you come from an uh, academic uh, mentoring ground, uh, if you can just emphasize on the um, importance of uh, the career options, the landscape of career options and how to democratize art. And that is an area which you have been working closely. So if you can highlight on that segment and uh, take it, take, uh, share your opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. So to begin with, first I'd like to just make it very clear that in India, <clears throat> uh, as different from around the world, we're looking at a market that is broken up into three segments. Okay, right. the first segment is your high range. So that is pretty much anything that is priced at over two lakhs, um, consistently being sold through galleries and not directly from artists. Um, there is a lot of internal movement of art within that space, which is why only a certain set of names keep getting sold or traded. Um, as well as being pushed into the second type of market that you have, which is your auction market. That auction market, the prices keep inflating so much that people in the general domain look at it and say, oh wait, that's the price of art. I can't afford it. I don't want to buy it. I can't spend it. There's not really a clear understanding for people to realize the difference between a primary and an auction market. Because again, there's not enough education in place for that. It's always said in the same breath which is why everyone thinks those prices are the same. The third type of market you have is the primary market for pretty much everyone else. Unfortunately, as it's clubbed together. Okay? Right. Whether you're an a artist who went to a school or a self-taught artist or a hobbyist who's turning pro, it's unfortunately all clubbed together, which is quite terrible for those of us who constantly have been working to ensure a more, like you said, democratic market space uh, because the minute you start raising prices too much, yes. everyone else is then forced to inflate their prices. People then don't want to buy because again, the prices are just shooting up. I'll, I'll be very, very frank. I started painting in 2006. I started teaching myself in 2006. I 
started my art career specifically 2007 okay my prices i have not raised more than 25% in almost 14 years it's one of the reasons i've been able to consistently sell throughout maintain a career and still continue to produce artwork that people can afford and buy many of my peers at that time they either started off as self taught artists or as graduates from art schools went into a market which was booming at the time absolutely booming prices were through the uh, through the roof and then the bubble burst and then they couldn't sustain they all had to walk away from art or suddenly drop their prices so much that people said oh wait this commodity this product doesn't have value anymore right which then sent them backwards in time having to start from scratch to invite a new market and set themselves up again from scratch so it's a very dicey plane because we have a very unregulated market in india when it comes to art along with a lack of understanding of what things are so i'll give you another example here uh we have paintings made in watercolor in acrylic in oil everyone is like oh wow that's a painting i will pay a certain price for it print making on the other hand people immediately equated to saying oh it's an inkjet print but there are so many uh, sorry about that i live near the airport so you might hear some echo from you know um uh the traditional forms of print making in this country wood block prints lino cut prints so as well that we do currently and people simply don't understand it so the entire print making market which at one point commanded a great amount of respect and a lot of money today is languishing so we need to kind of change our approach to how we talk to people about art and that's where the market change comes in for me at least i'd like to inject here i think yeah. uh, a really important point which you touched upon is about uh, educating people about art so when you also talk about what is affordable and what isn't affordable you know i think we are talking about price versus value and in something which is as uh, you know um, as different as art you know you can't say that your pain brushes have costed so much your time is worth so much you know you can't qualify things in such an objective manner it's a little bit beyond that you know it's what Absolutely. you take from the painting very personally and uh, i mean as much as i agree with you about you know the the market boom that happened in the uh, art field and then the crash that there was and even now it's quite a slow period you know maybe it's starting to pick up very slowly but it's still not the great, greatest of times for one to be an artist and being an artist who's just graduated myself i can say that as at least in the indian scenario i think we need to discuss about people's understanding and awareness Absolutely. about first you know because today a person of a, you know um, of a reasonable stature might be okay to spend on a car or a slightly more luxury clothing brand move from like you know um shopping locally on the street to shopping from a zara or a mall brand you know but people are not yet investing in art because they've not been exposed to it exactly what i was coming to that's it's not grown up with art around them so absolutely seem like it's something necessary in their lives it, absolutely they need to be very elitist you know exactly. so purvi that's exactly what i was coming to uh, in my next point which was as an educator that's what my role has been for the longest time and when i say that i've taught people from age 6 to age 86 it was specifically for that reason and a lot of my peers currently are taking on that role more and more seriously in order to expose people to art work to talk to them about art to explain the value of it like you say we talk about price as one thing and value as another but we need to kind of equate the two and say you're paying a certain price for a certain value that you're getting out of the art work and i'll give you an example of it there's a painting of mine that i sold in 2009 which i had priced at 30000 rupees okay the person who bought it fell in love with it wanted to buy it but very clearly told me i cannot afford this i cannot afford to pay this price so knowing the value that they would get out of it i made a deal with them i said see you don't have to pay me up front right now you can still own this artwork with a smile on your face without a hole in your pocket let's work out a payment plan so that you can buy it who's to say we can't do that if we can pay emis and installments on cars and other products that are very high value Mm. and then say oh i'm not going to let you eat in my car because it's my car and i paid a lot of money for it 
why can't we do that with art and say if you're assigning a value to it let people buy it in a certain manner let's make it easy if we're going down a capitalist route it can be applied there's no reason it can't be this is happening though i mean you have art space abroad and you have similar platforms in india where you can even rent art for a couple yes. of months and or you can buy prints and by print i mean digital print you're not the, the traditional kind of print making medium that we're talking about but um, i think more than the word value i would use the word experience or uh, you know uh, when it comes to art because like when you go on a holiday you know you come back with an experience likewise art is something that you need to experience something that you need to have a conversation with and what i would and what i try and do more and more with my family which is like a business family you know we're not traditionally coming from an art background and uh, you know the post to art i've done various kinds of painting and craft hobbies you know it never ended up as a career because i think back then art was only seen as a vocation you know art is even even now a lot of people ask me you know like or oh, we didn't know there was a masters in painting for example and uh, i think i think it when we are talking about um, what are the difficulties in the art market i would say that the art market itself is very limited because when we look at india as a country i think people have their struggles of roti kapda makan as we speak so art comes at a much later stage and you know it's not the immediate necessity to experience i would like art. to say something over here Yeah. yeah please uh, actually if we go in our background of our country we were the rich people in respect of art and heritage the art come to our blood or in our uh, in our life because of our religion because of our uh, sentiments uh, those are connected with our roots like me my family was having a foundry to make the reproduction of bronze sculptures those were the uh, original sculptures from chola dynasty or uh, from the uh, sculptors those are from europe and america of 16th and 17th century so the reason behind why we are not able to sell the art what i feel that see uh, in the ancient time art either it is in the form of sculpture or in the form of painting or in the form of uh, carpet was only for the king and the rich people the carpet uh, the furniture they were pieces of art but they come to the house of a common people because they had uh, bought it and brought up like an industry uh, what i mean to say i feel that you can understand like uh, uh, in the in the statue industry when where i had learned the things about the art people are buying small statues in ganesh puja durga puja and they are preparing pandals they are spending money because their sentiments of religion are related to that so and in fact uh, when in our family if you see in your houses you have a statue of ganesha a natraj they are actually art pieces but we had bought them because of our sentiments the the weakest point of art industry is that art cannot become an industry till today we are keeping it in our uh, drawers we are keeping art in our uh, shelves because we are looking for the highest price the thing what i had seen from my experience i am not a uh, college going student i had not been any art college what i had learned i had learned from my family i had assisted mr satish gujral as an assistant and a vendor of uh, making the sculptures and printing i had so what i had seen that uh, when you keep your art inside your home and when you think that we have to sell at a higher price it will be on very less walls the thing an artist has to learn he has to learn if you want to learn you have to learn from ibrahim hussein who had created serigraphs who had created prints of his own artworks and let us make it reachable to a common people because you are not making you are not making uh god and goddesses so that people can keep you in their houses and uh, worship them but what are you what ever you are making is your own concept and uh, today's scenario is if you make anything creative 
anything useful either it is in painting or it is in sculpture or it's an installation people are there to buy the people have money people have money those are spending a lot of money not uh, not even on the cars but even on the mobile also there yeah? if you can say abhi uh, iphone 12 uh, coming or as coming then people are ready to buy them at any price i had saw but the thing is uh, we have to create such kind of product we have to create i'm not saying that you can make it a print on uh, sari suit cushion no you can sell it as a painting but you have to make it affordable we have to because you can re- reach it to a common people then you will become a big artist then you will be able to sell more at higher price i also so think if anybody wants to if anybody wants that he wants to sell either he is a craftsman or he is an artist i don't uh, think that is, there is any craftsman everybody is an artist because education but he has an experience to create the things mm-hmm. uh, generally to so the thing is when the point make a foldable creative art and make it in bulk make it in bulk and try to market on a uh, platform like uh, one page spotlight or uh, any any platform is either it is offline or online then you will definitely get a success and on that scenario if we work together we can get a succeed to make it create this art as an industry so that nobody can think ke yaar main painting karta hu lekin aap se koi nahi puchega painting karta hu acha uske alawa kya karte ho aap it's a big question when i <laughs> jab main sunta hu kisi ke muh se the people say oh you are painter acha self proud artist so people already didn't have faith that i know how to do anything right for me at least you've gone to an art school you have degree to for somebody to look and say oh she has a qualification she right. must know what she is doing in my case people would just say oh you've taught yourself how to paint so uh, but what do you do for money what do you do for a job today <laughs> exactly it will be it will be it will be finished when we can it is already getting art. finished it's already getting finished and i can say that very proudly because many of my students okay even though they're still in school for design as artists on their own career they've set up their own artistic career creating prints postcards hand painted objects whatever it is nobody today is asking them in their families or in their surroundings so what do you plan to do for money nobody's asking them that and i'm so happy to see that because for about the first 5 6 years of my career that's all i ever heard ki paise kaise banane mein how are you going to make a living off of this how are you going to survive it's only once i started organizing my exhibitions and putting up pieces in galleries and creating a buzz around me that people realize oh he's taking this seriously unfortunately a lot of the young artists have to make a certain choice between marketing themselves full time or making art full time it becomes very difficult to balance the two i've struggled with it i know <clears throat> but i've found a way by creating a system that works for myself and that's what many of the young creators have an advantage even over somebody my age has they been able to figure out how to strike that balance by setting a schedule saying okay on these days i'm going to create something these days i'm going to focus on the marketing these days i'm going to rest and come back to it again they've created their own kind of cycle which is what's really boosting them and obviously platforms like one page spotlight help consolidate uh, their artwork into a single space to help manage all of that and be able to control it in a slightly better manner but like what puri was also saying earlier that understanding of the experience right what is it that we are going to have why is it important to us that story now is what needs to take precedence how are we telling people a story about art which is what it yes. used to be exactly you used to want to go buy a carpet from someone you used to want to go buy a tapestry or a ring or a piece of jewelry because there was a story attached to it you yes. wanted to know who made it how they made it why they made it what is the history yeah. of the style there was always some kind of story with it that really made you fall in love with it or made you want to tell that story to someone else i think if we can start doing that storytelling bit a little bit more efficiently now i'm not going to say more i'm just going to say more efficiently now i think we'll have a much better chance of being able to take the art to whatever kind of market we create for ourselves or a generic market um sanjit i don't know whether you agree with me yeah. or not but 
Yeah. yeah. In fact, in yeah. fact, that's what it, it's a it's a very valid point, Jay. So, in fact, I would like to pitch in here because you know that's something that I have realized in the last four years of my journey. So, so my journey started more as not as an artist, but more as kind of when I start started traveling to a lot of clusters and places, uh, right near my hometown and and to a lot of places in Gujarat and Rajasthan as well. where i saw a lot of obviously a lot of raw talent and skill level which is there in terms of how they make a product and in, into their techniques right uh, it's a simple it it might be a simple wooden product also or it might be a textile related product also but the the thoroughness and the details of the skill level and the techniques that are involved in making a product that was something which was quite exceptional and something that really moved me you know that was my kind of first introduction of into a traditional craft process and that really really kind of uh, you know inspired me in the journey where i saw that there is a, a a lot of potential which lies in these places but in terms of when it comes to uh, you know seeing seeing that potential from maybe a 5000 feet and when you come to a market or to a nearby town or maybe to a metro location today or if you go to somewhere outside india as well that's something which is extensively lacking right there is a huge gap in terms of how people would want to appreciate the traditional craft of india that's what that's what we realized and and that is something which is which was kind of the gap that i uh, you know wanted to basically bridge that gap for uh, for the communities that uh, you know we, we we extensively you know talked with we interacted with and kind of spent time with and realized and realized the the kind of potential that family lies in in making that particular art basically and uh, i think that that's where you know uh, the storytelling part comes in because today uh, you know if i talk about the indian market today the extensively the market and uh, the indian market focus a lot in terms of uh, you know product and price level negotiations right and uh, but when it comes to the artisan products if you are able to uh, you know tell that story beautifully in terms of how that craft is made what are the processes involved and you and you you project that story beautifully to to a customer today outside india or in india as well you are able to realize that better value for any artisan who is making that product and that's something which is which is kind of uh, you know kind of become inherent to what i do today in terms of uh, you know making sure that the story the process and the person itself reaches to a lot of places uh, which can tell uh, the story about the inheritance of the craft the story about what products can be made from that particular technique and that's how you know you you make them realize the value of the product and uh, you create and you create that sustainable chain supply chain that you want to do for these communities you know so i think yeah so that that's something that uh, you know i extensively started doing and i think one more thing that uh, you know we were earlier talking about in terms of uh, value creation in terms of uh, you know how we can communicate better i think uh, that's that's where uh, today i i will feel that we extensively lack uh, you know in terms of uh bringing that art and connecting it to a buyer maybe sitting in a metro location or sitting outside india because that's something which is kind of gradually now getting channelized with with the notion of uh having a digital world uh you know pitching in for us but uh, still in terms of uh you know finally making people realize that this is what the value of the craft is this is how the craft is made that's something which is seriously lacking i think that's we as uh, you know kind of uh, kind of artists and kind of organizations have to work uh, in terms of bringing that story beautifully together to the world for these artisans and for the art itself i want to mention a really nice book actually which i had bought even before i was completely into fine art you know i was uh, going through a design education at that time and it kind of touches upon what you just concluded with uh, i think essentially what people want to know is what they for and what has gone into the work so much so that they couldn't have done it themselves you know that is essentially what they want to know ki you know if it's a canvas and it's just cut from the center like why is it worth millions and millions of dollars like a 5 year old could have done that and uh, at least for uh, artists or painters or anyone who wants to you know kind of uh, question this uh, thing there's a really nice book by Susie Hodge it's called why your 5 year old could not have done that you know and it talks about certain important pieces of artwork in art history you know, uh, looking at dali's work and pollock's work and you know why a lobster shaped like telephone is worth so much in art or like why someone's splattering paint on a canvas has so much importance uh, you know in today's day and date and then what they do is you know through just like one spread 
they explain to you what was the thought, uh, what was the movement uh, within which that was created and why it was not something random that just happened, you know, and what is the context behind the artwork? Because I think as humans, we all try to make meaning and make sense of um, what something is and when something has a very high value which you're not able to grasp immediately. You want to know more and if you don't get that information, you ridicule it and you dismiss it immediately. So essentially what people want to know is skill. Like we all value skill. And also in India, for example, I've noticed either artwork that is related to religion, something decorative or something figurative is most appreciated. So if you can make someone's portrait very beautifully or you can make a Radha Krishna, you know, it's really appreciated. Yeah. But when you actually start moving into conceptual art, you know, which doesn't explain everything to you immediately, you start to question whether it's art at all and whether it has any meaning or it has any skill. But the actuality of the fact is that there is a very non-linear process involved and Indians at large, you know, the um, masses are yet to understand what is this non-linear thinking and process all about and how to grasp visual languages which go beyond the figurative or decorative because today my language is like I do a lot of like collage-ish work if I may say so but you know I'm not painting faces and I'm not painting like very beautiful motors like sometimes they may be bits or there may be some text which people can decipher, but it's not exact. You know, it's not such straightforward communication. And as a country, we're used to that. You know, whether you look at henna patterns, whether you look at rangoli, you know, whatever you may look at, like everything is very solidified, very um, decipherable. So we as people are used to reading that kind of a language. And what needs to happen is that we need to educate ourselves and help others around us, you know, broaden our perspective of what are the different languages mm -hmm. that are involved in art, you know, and I mean, I have a 12 year old sister, and, uh, you know, she was doodling and I said, uh, do you know what Zentangles are? She knew that because, you know, that's, that's quite the trend There are workshops happening. But when I started to talk to her about futurism or constructivism, you know, she didn't know about it. It's because also in school, we're taught history, but we're never really taught art history. You know, I myself got to learn a lot about art and design history in university, but never in school. So how do you expect someone who's just done science or commerce and only seen like traditional figures of gods and goddesses and maybe decorative motifs uh, to understand or appreciate art beyond that? And this is something that galleries and uh, you know middle people also struggle with a lot because they while they may understand what the artist is doing they're kind of stuck in between okay, okay how do we sell this because our viewer is not yet educated enough and we can only try to maybe push them like 10 percent or 15 percent and beyond the it's knowledge, it's experience, it's an eye for knowing what is pretentious art and what is really come organically through an artist process. Because we'll see a lot of artists also today who like to paint, who are self-taught, but not really put in, you know, there is this inherent pressure to belong. And so they start copying certain stuff without really having undergone the process. Because the process involves reading, watching good films, um, seeing theater, writing. I mean, art making is not really just about painting and painting every day. You know, reading is as much part of the process as seeing or drawing or anything else is. So when, when you talk about a story, Sanchit, uh, I think a, a big part of it is educating people about the skill yeah. process and the history of the medium as well. So I myself like moved back to India about five years ago and I was, um, you know, quite unaware of so many um, crafts and traditional drawing mediums or like, you know, styles in India. But as I was doing art history in university and as I started to travel around, you know, I 
really started to see the value of things that we have very much within our culture, which I've seen. But the difference was in the way I was introduced to it. You know, like I've seen Bali art a lot of times before. I didn't know it came from Thane. So uh, how they will maybe always have like certain figures or in Madhubani, how things will always be in pairs or, you know, they will never have a single figure because it's not considered a... Uh, uh, like a good woman, you know, so they will always have pairs of birds or Radha Krishna or cows or whatever it may be. So context, I think context is a big thing which is missing. And for aspiring artists, I would say, you know, um, reading and studying art history you know, is absolutely essential. It's not just that you do a bit of shading and, you know, a bit of drawing and you're an artist. Okay, you're a hobby artist. Your picture. There's more than meets the eye with an artist, right? There's a lot of cerebral work which also goes into Absolutely. becoming an artist. Um, I think whether it's an artist, uh, you know, an aspiring artist, a budding artist, or a mid-career artist, or a bio, you know, education is a must. And I can also suggest there's another really good book. Um, for a short introduction on art by Gombrich called The Story of Art. I mean, that was initially one of my very first reads when I started to read about art history. And uh, I think it's the only responsible way to go about whether you want to buy art or whether you want to make art. It's first to know. Absolutely. That so, to, 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 to that, uh, so I teach, I, at least I used to, before I joined uh, ISD, I used to do one-on-one -on -one workshops. I used to do group workshops. Uh, anyone who's ever sat for one of my workshops will tell you, it's not a traditional workshop. It's not something where I just sit and say, okay, here's a painting. Now you copy me, color by numbers, end of story. I've always hated that way of doing things because it doesn't teach you anything. It shows you how to just make a picture, but it doesn't like give you an idea of exactly what it is about. So what I do instead is I introduce art history into that workshop saying, before we start touching the canvas, let's understand who this artist is. Let's understand this style. Why was it born at that particular time? What were the influences? Why are these choices being made? If you want to make a painting in this style, why are you choosing it? Let's discuss that. And then we start actually working with it, figuring out the techniques, applying the paint or making a print or whatever it is. But that artistry component to me has always been very critical because like I said, I'm a self taught artist. I didn't say I'm an artist for a year because I spent that entire year every day, eight hours a day, putting in the work to educate myself. Reading, writing, watching films, going to galleries, uh, going to museums, sitting there and sketching, studying things, talking to people. It's extremely critical. And like you said, in school, we're taught history, not art history, but even the history we're taught is without context. That key word that you mentioned is context whether it's a traditional Indian art form or a West European art form or an American abstraction and uh, uh, abstract expressionism, whatever it is, without context, it means nothing. Right. And exactly. I think that those context is what scares people away because they, I don't know it. I can't understand it. I don't know what is going on here because even though if you look at many gallery shows, you walk in and you see the, the concept note written over there. There's so many big words that people have never seen before in their lives. And they're just like, okay, I guess I get it. I don't know. I'll just look around, yay, pretty pictures, and I'll leave. They don't even want to engage in a conversation because they're made to feel like they don't know anything. Yeah. That's so I think the art world. Like some people use jargon to kind of um, maybe make themselves feel good, but I'm very much against it, you know? Absolutely. I go to a gallery and I see a paragraph full of like really big words which mean nothing and sometimes I've actually stood there, looked up meanings and realized that none of it means anything and I've ridiculed it with friends saying, you know, there's absolutely no need to put out material which makes zero sense and just to kind of show that you're an intellectual. Absolutely. So I personally believe in specific writing which conveys because that's a lot more powerful than using. So, I mean, I'm not saying that people always use big words. It's possible that someone's um, reading and writing skills are a little bit more developed, but you kind of have to keep in mind what the audiences are like. And, uh, you know, maybe side of yourself a little bit to see how much you'll be able to convey. And, you know, uh, I think art needs to be made more approachable. And uh, there are people doing that. Like, I've personally worked with the foundation called Start India Foundation, 
which operates out of Delhi and has done festivals all over the country. And they keep doing collaborations with like many street artists and they're kind of focusing more on the street art culture um, because they feel that art needs to be accessible because our masses are actually on the streets and not in galleries. And, uh, you know, maybe there is a certain intimidation which happens with uh, galleries because, you know, it's just about where they're situated, how people are dressed, like the language, you know, which is primarily spoken at galleries or, you know, there's a certain uh, image which you start to create in your head, you know. Um, but I mean, and personally speaking, like while everything might seem very rosy, yes, the art community can be very closed and very exclusive and um, being an outsider once myself, I can say that it was not easy, you know, and it still isn't very welcoming. But I also would say that for anyone who's trying to step in, never give up, focus on your art, focus on your craft, uh, don't get intimidated and, uh, you know, make good work and people will come after you, but you Absolutely. have to make sure that you are growing. And then everything else will follow. So don't look for acceptance, you know, don't look for people's validation. Just connect with the right people, try and get some mentorship and, and just keep progressing. Um, but yeah, you're right. Art needs to be accessible, even in the form of language. It isn't right now. But I think we're recognizing that in India, at least, and it's happening slowly. Change is coming. Absolutely think, change uh, is coming. Uh, if I may join in and share a point, I mean, it's been a very comprehensive way to look at how uh, the changing landscape has been in, in the uh, global scenario as well as the Indian scenario. And uh, thank you, uh, Purvi, Sanjeet, everyone for taking it forward. And uh, I have few uh, in this session, I have few specific questions also, which I wanted to take it to each one of you so that um, with your area and expertise where you have been coming from. So we'd like to have a more clear understanding from your point of view.